We thank you, Father God, that you sit in heavenly places and you watch over your children. There is a way you do not know of as of this moment. I am taking my body into a new direction, and I've told you this before, but I will tell it to you again this night. I have laid a different path before your feet. You are on a journey that is not going to end. You are making a way for the second coming of my son Jesus. Narrow is this path. You must continually walk this narrow path of holiness and righteousness. There's no loopholes to make mistakes. You must walk as my son Jesus walked. You must preach my word in season and out of season. You must let my divine nature flow through you. You must allow my glory to bring the miracles wherever you are. There will never be the right circumstance because I'm going to move when I want to move and I need a vessel that's willing to move in any given second of the day, night. What you are going to see in the days and the months ahead are going to totally shock you because it's a new revelation I'm bringing to my body. There are things that's going to come down the road that you're not prepared for as of yet. That is, that is why it's very imperative that you walk closely to the Father, stay on this narrow path. Evil is going to become even more evil. Fear will come upon my people even though I tell them not to walk in fear. The fear will come because they are not prepared for what is coming even though I have forewarned. And I am telling you this night think this not a strange thing that I say unto you. The hour is very, very imperative. And you must be about the Father's business. You must drop all the facade that you've been walking in. You must at all cost be listening to my still small voice of instruction. The atmosphere weighs heavy with the battle that is going on in the heavenly realm. And my children do not even know it is going on. But you, my children, you have been forewarned about these things. I have spoken about these things over and over and over again. Yet some of you are still playing with the fire. And that fire is going to destroy your anointing. I've called you many times to come away, my beloved, into the heavenly places and sit with me at my table and let me instruct you. And I am doing that again this night. I am calling you forth out of lethargy. And I am asking you to get out of self. Because it's all about souls. It is not about you. I will take care of you. I will meet your every need. As you meet the needs that I lay before your feet. Of others. My son Jesus knew 
what his destiny was and he walked it out you know what your destiny is but you keep wanting to stop and take the side roads this is a night like every other night that I speak to you that I say watch what you are doing walk carefully do not allow the enemy to throw a, a stumbling block before your feet the snare of the fowler has been laid before you but I have made a way of escape there is no excuse I will accept no excuse. The souls, the harvest need to be brought in. And I am moving on with or without you. I have to stay on my timetable. The clock is ticking and the end is drawing near and the work has not been completed. Look around about you, see the devastation everywhere. My people have not yet yielded their hearts unto me. My people still do not want heavenly things. And this is what is happening to the world. There's still much devastation that will occur that you, my children, you do not have to be in that devastation. You just need to yield yourselves more completely to me and walk in the path that I've laid before your feet. There are those that act dumbfounded. They th say, well, I, 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 I just have never heard that. You've never said that to me. But that doesn't cut it. I have said it many different ways. You just didn't want to hear it. And even tonight, some of you don't want to hear it. Don't bring an, do not bring an excuse before the throne of grace. I want commitment. Total commitment. I want a vessel that I can work through, a vessel of honor. One that is not consumed in itself. This is serious business, what's going on in the spirit realm. In church, you have not yet become serious enough to fight the strong battles that are ahead of you and win. Come unto me this night. Seek my face. Seek my desires. Close the door on what you want, what you need, what you desire. Come boldly to the throne of grace as an empty vessel that I can work through. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. There's a cry going out of here. God saying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. And that is not happening. The body of Christ is not preparing the way of the Lord. The body of Christ is preparing the way for themselves. And that is going to end up in utter devastation. Tonight, God wants to talk about battlefields. Your person came just now, came in with a bag. 
All right, God wants to talk about battlefields. There are different kinds of battlefields. You have the battlefield of the mind, battlefield of your emotions, battlefield of decisions, battlefield of different loves, battlefields of whom you can trust. Let's go over those again. There are different kinds of battlefields. You have the battlefield of the mind, battlefield of your emotions, battlefield of decisions, battlefield of different loves, battlefields of whom you can trust. And I know that we all have those battlefields. If we're honest, we all have them. Prayer puts you on, God said, prayer puts you on a spiritual battlefield where you have to prevail. So we have a spiritual battlefield. I believe a lot of people miss that battlefield. They're so caught up in their worldly ways that they don't realize there's a spiritual battle that we are in. That people don't want to admit that, that there really is a battle in heaven right now. And it's being fought, and the enemy is furious. God addresses that, I think, in something I put out today, newsletter or something. God said, I want my church to have only one battlefield, and that is the battlefield of destroying the enemy's camp. Every other battlefield is sinking sand. Children, I have every battle under my control. Uh, you're fighting a battle you've already won. You know, I wished we would get that down into our spirit, man, and understand that the blood at the cross won every, every battle we'll ever go through. We have to be tested and try to we'd be like spoiled rich kids who never amount to a heel of beans. God's trying to get, has been trying to get char character in us and integrity. And the people are fighting and kicking and carrying on. They don't want to have to fight anything. They want God to do everything for us. And it doesn't happen that way. He's with us. And he's already won the battle. But you're going to have to fight. All right, where am I at? I know exactly how each and every one will turn out. Turn your battles into chances to praise me. See, we don't know how to praise either. And, and when we praise, we don't praise properly. We praise, you know, just instead of praising and really, really thanking God and saying, letting God know you really understand you're yelling and screaming and carrying on, you know, fighting. Why don't you just be quiet, sit still, and just, just make love to your Father. Praise him. For who he really is. You know, sometimes you just have to be still, like God said. You're wearing yourself out. You're beating your head against a wall. You're not getting anywhere. And God tells us, be still. And we don't know how to be still. We think we have to be active and screaming and shouting and carrying on. And really and truly... I'm going to tell you, you'll find your biggest breakthrough when you learn you just to be still. When you just sit down and say, Father, I give up. I've done all I know to do. I can't do anymore. I'm just going to sit in your presence and let you know how much I love you. And if you do it, you do it. If you don't, you don't. You know? Turn your eyes, then God said, turn your eyes unto the hills from whence cometh your help and keep them there. Psalm 121.2 says, I lift up my eyes to the hills from where does my help come. Let's start that again. I lift up my eyes to the hills, period. From where does my help come? Question mark. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. God is still telling us to fix our eyes upon him. Quit looking at the, cir the circumstances. We aren't going to deny they're there. They are there. But we aren't supposed to keep looking at the circumstances. We are supposed to 
put her eyes upon God and allow him to take care of the circumstances. Never, God said, never for one second deviate from the path I have placed your feet upon. The enemy is running scared. You don't believe that, though. You say, I don't see that. That is because you are not looking into the spirit realm and seeing as I see. You will notice that every time you start an uphill momentum, all of a sudden you find yourself sliding back down into the darkness. That is because your heart is not fixed on me. If it was fixed on me, you would stay on level ground and there would be no chance for the enemy to trip you up. You know, the enemy is fighting us as hard as he can fight us. He, he's not only fighting us one thing, he's ten things at one time. And if you're like me, last night I was sitting there and you had battle after battle after battle. And I just sit and start crying. And I said, God, this is so intense. And if I'm having a hard time with it, what are the weaker ones going to do? And, you know, and then I just said, told God, you go to the weaker ones, strengthen them, and let them encourage them, lift them up. I know enough what to do. But we need to start thinking about the, the weak ones. The ones who are just saved or, you know, the ones who weren't paying attention and didn't get saved and sit in the house of God sinning. And they're going to hell. Somebody needs to pray that God goes to them and ministers to them. And it has to be you and I. This is why God is saying you can't carry the glory. It would kill you. Because you can't even deal with your own deep circumstances they take you out and the glory would surely kill you are you listening this is serious now. I didn't know it was going to be serious but this is serious with what God said before and now what he's saying now but I do know this forgets God said there's a band of angels a band of angels watching over us right now keeping us safe you see, God is always on our side. And, and if we would just, under, even though we're going through things, if we just understand that the angels are watching over us, just like God said right now, they're up there fighting in the atmosphere for us. Just like when Daniel for, prayed for 21 days, there, there was a war going on for his answer to his prayer. And Daniel just kept praying. But see, we don't do that. We quit. And we feel sorry for ourselves. Phones are too easy to get to. Pick up the phone, call somebody, let them pray for me. That, no, that isn't going to work anymore. The battle has become so intense that you're going to have to learn how to fight for yourself knowing that the battle's already won. All right, Psalm 57, 7 says, my heart is fixed, O oh God. My heart is steadfast and confident. I will sing and make melody. I wish that was true. My heart is fixed, O oh God. My heart is steadfast and confident. I will sing and make melody. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus and he said to him you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind have I not commanded you when you get to the, when you get this down when you love God more than you love anything else in this world I guarantee you you're going to be on level ground and even though the, sometimes the waves are just so strong they try to they just about take you out God's going to protect you and you're going to know you're protected. You're going to feel his presence. You know, I don't know about you, but I've been feeling God closer here in the last month than I have for a long time. He's constantly ever around about me. And God is doing that to keep us safe. He's doing that speaking. He And I don't know about you, but he's speaking volumes to me about different things that's going on in the world. And he's especially concerned about what's going on in the body of Christ. He said, they're, they're not getting it, and they're going to go under. I tell you, you don't want to go to hell. You don't want to miss your day of visitation with the Father. 
You talk about screaming and pulling your hair out, you will whenever you find out you've done that. Too late, you can't go back. You're going to have to use every every ounce of strength you have someday, guys. And, because I know, and I'm not going to tell you, that, I'm not going to lie to you. You're going to have to use every ounce of strength and faith you have some days just to stay above board. That's how hard the body of Christ is being fought right now. The ones that are more, you know, been in the Lord longer are getting fought harder. Your younger ones, you think you're going through great battles, but yours aren't near what we're going through. We're seasoned. And the enemy's trying to take us out because, see, we can look at you and say you can make it. Because we've been there and done that. And we know what God has brought us through. And you know, we're trying, we're us older ones that are seasoned, we're watching you younger people, and we're praying for you. Well, I say, I'm praying for you, and I know the others are too. I'm praying that you finally get a hold of and get a grasp on what's really going on around about you and that the battle is to take you out. God is fighting that battle in the heavenlies so that the enemy doesn't take us out, but we have a part to play in that. We have to make sure we do our part. We have to make sure we're walking in holiness and righteousness. We have to make sure that we're trusting in the father and not in flesh are you understanding this and you're going to find yourself being separated from people too pam you're going to be separated it's going to be a lonely time for you but you're going to be separated because of the anointing that you carry and he doesn't want anybody to destroy that anointing God saying you've been through what you think is enough but the enemy never thinks you've been through enough and he's fighting you and he's going to fight you harder in the next couple of days the, God said the enemy goes to great lengths to make sure he keeps you in a state of confusion he makes sure you're distracted on all sides just think about what's going on around about you. Is that what's going on? You know, the enemy's distracting you on all sides. He's trying to get you to a place where you can't keep your mind on Christ, but you have circumstances just hit you at, at every every turn. You know, he's trying to take us out. Do you understand that? You know, people are dying, our loved ones are dying, you know, and and getting really sick or whatever. And and But I can't concentrate on that. I really truly can't. And if somebody's dying or sick, I don't concentrate on that because that's God's job. I pray, I let it go. I have to be about the Father's business and the Father's about his business watching over that one that's sick or dying or whatever. Some people say I'm cold-hearted, but I've always been like that. I just cannot entertain the dead. You know, go and sit in the morning and carry on. Well, I shouldn't say carry on. I cannot entertain the dead. That's God's job to take care of them. If it's, if it's their time, then they'll go on home. You know, I pray. I've even went so far as to ra raise them from the dead. Found out they didn't want to be raised. So, you know, okay, what do you want to do? Raise them from the dead because God says you can? I wouldn't even focus on that. I don't even focus on that anymore now because I found out people. some people don't want to be raised from the dead. And if God wants them to really come back, he's going to send them back. That's just where I have come to in the last couple of weeks about that. It, I, there's other things. We have, to, we have to be concerned about the living that are dead. You know, the, the, the harvest. There are living dead people out there. We need to be concentrating on that. We need to be, be praying about that. We need to be bringing our lost, the prodigals back home. And that we need to be bringing the drug addicts and the alcoholics into the house of God. All right? I mean, you, you don't have to be where I'm at. <laughs> I'm just telling you that's where I'm at with that. All right, Second Corinthians 1.10. For it is he who rescued and saved us from such a perilous death and he will still rescue and save us. In and on him we have set our hope, our joyful and confident expectation that he will again deliver us from danger and destruction and draw us to himself. 
God will deliver us. But we don't believe that or we wouldn't be boohooing all the time. Right? We wouldn't be going around acting like a bunch of fools. We would be going around with our lights shining and, and being joyful. No matter what we're going through. People see you're going through trouble times. They say, how can you? Nancy, you said to me, Pastor Barbara, how can you be so happy with all the things you go through? God's taken those things I'm going through. He has them already. And he's going to do with them what he wants to. That's not my job to stay there in that pit. My job is to keep marching forward. And so is yours. Satan sends confusion when you seek to do God's will. Things that are clearly God's will for you that God keeps on telling you to do in prayer becomes confusing. Things that should be so obvious to you, Satan starts planting seeds of doubt and wonder. I see that every day, don't you, in the body of Christ? I think, how can you be so dumb and go there? You know, why do you, why do you entertain Satan all the time? Why do you believe him? Why can't you believe God? You should you should ask yourself that. Why, why why can't I believe God like I believe Satan? You let Satan throw in everything and anything at you and you carry on like a fool. But yet God tells you all these wonderful things and you say, was that really God? You know, quit it. God said, and he definitely makes sure he causes you to stumble in your love walk. We're talking about Satan. If you can't love your father, then you cannot love anyone. What does my word tell you about love? Yeah, before we read that, I'm going to tell you. If you really love your father, you won't believe a thing that Satan's saying to you. Because your father never lies to you. And he will tell you if you're going to go into a pit. He'll tell you if you're going to go through a heavy warfare. He does not lie to you. He does not let things just jump out at you and surprise you. He tells you beforehand, forewarns you of what is ahead of you. A lot of people don't understand when God speaks to them. That's because they don't know God. And you're looking for love. You're looking for, for earthly love. And that, that you don't need earthly love. You need to love the Father. You need to get that down and then maybe, just maybe you'll be able to do earthly love. That's why you see the mess in the world that you see. Mark twelve twenty eight, And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another and seeing that he answered them well, asked him, which commandment is the most important of all? You know, they were talking to Jesus and Jesus answered, the most important is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. I wouldn't want some of you to love me like you love your neighbor. Isn't that, isn't that an amen? Amen. But we're supposed to love our neighbors. We're supposed to love God first. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes I just like to take some Christians and stick their head in the toilet and flush it a couple of times because they can be so dumb. But you still have to love them even though they're dumb. You have to understand that they don't have under their belt what you have under your belt. They should, but they don't. <laughs> so we have to love them just like God loved us through our messes, right? We have to love them through their messes. You weren't always saved. I'll never forget the first time God said that to somebody in church. He, he had me say to them, you weren't always saved so while you judging others so hard, harshly. We all think we were always saved, don't we? We, always, we forget what we used to do. John thirteen thirty four. a new commandment I give you that you love one another and as I have loved you that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. 
they're gonna they're gonna you're gonna say I'm a child of God and they're gonna watch your love walk and say really now that doesn't line up with the word of God what you're doing so if you're gonna run around telling everybody that you're God's child then act like it all right God said what is the gross darkness that I spoke about it is hate in its fullness hate is more prevalent than love in the land today the very thing I stand for, which is love, the enemy has trampled underfoot. My church is also guilty of hate. Church, you need to cleanse your hearts of all this dark sickness and allow my Holy Spirit to cleanse the inside of the cup. I've always made sure all my life that my house was a house of love and a house where God dwelled. But the last 20 years, that hasn't been so. Hate was brought into my house. And, and every year it magnifies itself even greater than the year before. It's very hard of my spirit, man, because I'm not a person of hate. And if you want to find out something that can wear you down quickly and make you go to the Father and cry out for his peace, is to live with a hateful bunch of people. You know, they look in your face and they say one thing behind your back. They say something else. But you hear hate all through the house. That is not a good thing. But God has promised me this year that that's all going to go away. And I'll have my house of love again. I don't understand how people can live with hate. I don't. And that's why this world is so messed up. They just don't know love. God told me that when I was first born again. They know lust, L-U-S-T, but they don't know love. And when I, the longer I go, the, the more I can see that. When people have relationships now, it isn't love, it's lust. You're like a bunch of dogs in heat. You know, and that makes me sick, and I know it makes God sick. There's no love there at all. It's always lust. It's ridiculous. I'm so glad that uh, Alan and Donna, that God put them together. That was love. And the, even, their, even their wedding was, was beautiful. It was love. It was God. And that's what we should have in the house of God. Well, I got off on the side road, so let's get back here again. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. Let's go to Matthew 23, 26. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and the plate. The outside may also be clean. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs which outwardly appear beautiful, but within are full of dead people's bones and all uncleanness. So you also outwardly appear righteous to others, but within you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Are you a Pharisee? I hope not. Because God addressed the Pharisees quite a bit in his word. God said, I am a God of my word, and I lie not. I tell you a truth. You are deceitful on all sides, and you have yourself fooled into believing nobody sees. But I see, I see, and I know all, and I am judging the house of Israel even as I speak. And he's talking about the church. I have people in my life, they, they act like they're telling me the truth all the time, but really what they're doing, they're just telling me what, only what they want me to know. And then they're keeping the other little stuff that they don't want me to know to their self. So that's a half truth. That's, a, that's deceitfulness. And I don't care for that. It, don't talk to me at all if you're not going to tell me the whole truth. You know, what, you know, what is there inside of you that is deceitful like that? You, know, you have to ask yourself these things. Why am I deceitful? Why do I only put so much out there and and I don't want them to see other things that are inside of me. I was told one time, you just need to quit telling about yourself. Then as I got into the Word, I'm so glad I have no skeletons in my closet. Because the enemies can't pull that out at, an, at, and at the right time and give God a bad name. So get your skeletons out of the closet get rid of them and then walk in the fullness of God you know sometimes <laughs> some of you get your word I thought oh God there, there a, a, a closet door just opened up 
<laughs> and God just reveals something to the whole church. Well, now they know, so don't have to hide it no more, right? It, it, I really think that that's a good, you know, I don't like to do it, but I think it's a good thing in the long run because this thing you've been hiding and afraid somebody else is going to find out about, God just brings out in the open, you know. Then you don't have to worry about it no more. Proverbs 15, 3, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. Hebrews 4.13, And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. I always think I'm a little nut every time I read these. Philippians 4.8.9, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. He said, meditate on the good things, not on the bad things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. And what did he say? I think it was as Paul wrote this, wasn't it? He said, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me. These do, and the God of peace will be with you. In other words, God said, I live the life of Jesus before you. And if you live the same way I live, then the God of peace will be with you. God said, you are nothing but dead men walking this earth. That was a nice statement, wasn't it? All right, James 4, 7. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. We don't have enough humility in the house of God. Too much pride. Ezekiel 37 verse 1. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out of the spirit. Uh, brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around and behold, there were very many in the open valley and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And so I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinew on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live, then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied that I was, as I was commanded, and as, as I prophesied there was a noise and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, and it an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, Our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O oh, my people, and brought you up from your graves. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and performed it, says the Lord. Now, you heard all that, and this is what God is saying. I am calling you forth. I am calling forth the dry dead bones to come alive into my resurrection power and bring in this end time harvest of lost souls. So he's calling you forth at night, your dry, dead bones. I am calling you from the very depth of my heart. Are you listening? 
Are you hearing this deep call thunder, deep message this day? There is a place of deep intimacy with God where spirit calls unto spirit. That's what I wrote. To experience a deeper dimension of God's presence, your soul must hunger and thirst for God. And I'm sorry to say that's why not many can walk that straight and narrow path because they aren't thirsting and hungering after God. Intimacy with God is found only in the realm of the Spirit. To experience a deeper dimension of God's presence, your soul must hunger and thirst for God. In the same way, a, deep, a deer pants for the safety and substance of water. I'm going to stop there because, women, you need to know something. Lustful, whoremongering men co come into the house of God. I was told this by one of those type of people. Because they said that w they can get more women to go to bed with them in the house of God than they can in the world. Because they said you're, you're stupid and senile. And, and they can talk you into doing anything. And that's why lustful, perverted men come into, ho into the house of God. Not saved. They're, 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 in, they're, they're the wolves in sheep clothing. They're in here, in here to pry on, on you innocent people who, who do, aren't walking in the spirit yet and don't understand and can't tell who is perverted and who is not. And, and they'll take you out. Just because a man sits in the house of God doesn't mean they're of God. You need to always remember that. When I was told that, and this person was being very honest and open with me, I was very shocked. But even though I had witnessed that for ever, ever since I've been born again, the men in the house of God were always trying to do things with me. They just didn't know who they were dealing with. I'm not perverted in any way. But see, some of you are young, and you're in this you're in this age group where feels good do it well it feel good do it it'll take you to hell and oh look that 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 guy he, he's what looking at me well you know what he's looking at 10 other women too so you you just need to really get this uh if you really want to walk with god you're going to have to get your mind on christ and keep it there and not allow the men in the house of god to pull you out of god's will there, there's so much better for you. There, there's so much better for you. You're selling yourselves far too short. And there's women in the house. God do the same thing, but it's more men than it is women. I've had women come up to me and tell me what they were, why they were here, and I'd like to blow my mind. People, <laughs> they didn't know how innocent I was then, <laughs> and I didn't know what I know now. And the things they were tell me what they were doing here, I'd, I'd, you know, I just couldn't hardly phantom all that but I learned to phantom it and learned a lot of lessons and so men there's women in the house of God the same way all right then God's saying I am calling from the very depth of my heart are you listening are you hearing this deep call unto deep messages today in Psalm 42 7 deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls all your waves and billows have gone over me only a call from the depths can provoke a response from the depths. God is asking you to call from the very depth of your heart for him to come and consume you and use you for his glory. Nothing shallow can ever touch the depths, nor can anything superficial touch the inward parts. Deep is calling to deep. Spirit is calling to spirit. What are you going to do with it? Deep is calling to deep. Spirit is calling to spirit. Do you, how deep do you want to go with God? You know, okay, you might be just deep enough where you where you go to heaven and sit in a rocking chair. But that isn't what God wants. He wants us to go so deep that while we're here on earth, we'll be warriors and we'll fight for him. And then when we go into heaven, he gives us places of authority. You know, when God creates a, the, the new earth, a new heaven, how do you know? You might be the next president. You know what I'm saying? 
what, what kind of authority is it, you know do you really want you you look at me like you know you might think I'm crazy but I know what I'm talking about whatever you're doing down in earth in this earth is what you're going to be doing in heaven and then it, then it's going to be what you're going to be doing when God brings us back down here with a new heaven and new earth Everything God has given me to write in in the bulletin, two articles, and the newsletter, He's talking about the battle that we're we're in, and this is where God's at right now. The battle. He wants to understand how strong the battle really is, and I'm going to be honest with you. I've been spending many times just sitting crying because the enemy has just been attacking right and left, and I see all the sin around about me, and it's just drive me to distraction you know how you you know how that goes you all you all been there right you're you're there sins around about you and it, it hurts your spirit man it grieves him you just sit and cry god when is this ever going to end and we know it ends when he wants it to i know that but still and i still do that little stupid thing <laughs> when is this ever going to end what do you really want from god tonight if you want that deep walk with him, then spirit's calling to spirit. And the altar's open. God's going to give you tonight whatever kind of walk you want. So what you decide tonight is what you're going to have for the rest of your life. If you want a deep walk, he's going to give it to you. And if you want spirit calling to spirit, that's what you're going to be. The spirit's always going to be. Even Brother Allen's telling me, he said he's been hearing God. He just hears his voice constantly now see he's been crying out give me the deepness of who you are father so what is it that you want You know, God's telling me, I'm not going to smack you up alongside him. I'm going, you, I'm going to give you a gentle touch tonight. And then you're going to continually feel that gentle touch. And you're going to know that I touch you tonight. And then I'm touching you every day of your life. You know, if you don't want the deepness, that's all right with God. He'll just move on to somebody else. In fact, in one of the things he had me write, he's going to take some people's mantles now because they aren't serious with him. If you have a mantle, I would be very concerned how long I'm going to keep it if I'm not walking right with God. Alan, was you wanting to stand for the deepness or was you just up here to catch? Okay. I want you guys, when you when you need to know that you want something, you need to go ahead and receive it too. We all should have a chance to receive everything God has for us.
This is for Camilla. And dear, when you're at a time, <clears throat> a time of undressing, of being bare before me, so that we both can process the truth, lay aside every stumbling block, lay aside even the inferiority you may have to stand boldly before me, and, and allow me to move my wind over you and I even want to make sense dear one of the things that don't add up to you the different inward hostilities and the things that don't add up there's going to be peace now there's going to be security there's going to be an understanding of all things and dear ones the, the things in you that they grind and they bind you up and they aggravate you, just lay them all down. Let this be a new day between us to make sense of all the things that don't make sense and to do a new brand of addition and subtraction. And I will leave you with a clean slate and I will give you fresh robes of righteousness that you can then stand in, intercede from, and live throughout the ages in Daughter, you know my spirit, you know my word. This is the season that I want to use your mouth to speak to my people. There is a deepness that I want you to enter into. And daughter, rest assured that I am calling you forth. I am planting your feet on the solid ground. Do, do not let man steal this from you. Religion is destroying my people. Daughter, I want you to walk completely in the spirit and you will see wagging tongues that will try to discourage you. But daughter, remember this this night. I am your father and I'm calling you forth as a prophet for me. Be encouraged. This is the season that you've been preparing for. Much darkness, gross darkness, daughter, will fall upon this earth. And my children will need to hear my voice for true encouragement. Daughter, let me feel your vessel. Let me take you into this deeper place in me. You will stand boldly before the crowds and you will not be intimidated. They will know that a true prophet has, has stepped on the scene. But daughter, there will be others behind the scenes that will try to speak against you. This is my will and my plan for your life. Daughter, you do not know me just yet, but you will. You will. You will look up upon the heavens and you will see just how wonderful I really am. This is line upon line, precept upon precept, daughter. 
I'm not going to rush you forward. But you will move forward in me. And you will see my glory. You will see the miracles. You will see the wonders. And you will be filled with joy. And you're going to come to know a father who loves you. Daughter, I am a father of love, not of hate. I want you to understand that I love you. I want you to understand that I am for you. Draw yourself closer to me. Allow for me to come and heal and restore. Brother Merlin, I, as I was coming close to you, I heard the Lord say, Giddy up, time. Giddy up, son. It is time for you to go forth. Like my servant spoke tonight, no more excuses. I want you to come completely into the works that I've called you forth to do. Son, it is imperative for you to stand boldly and speak to the men. The men are broken. You've heard this before. But son, let me remind you that the men are beaten down. The women have come to displace them. And son, I need you to raise them up in my spirit. Giddy up time. Giddy up, son. Let's go. I'm calling you this night. Marilyn, God is saying it's time for you to do another men's meeting. You before me, I'll tell you how to do it, when to do it, all right? Because I was picking up, you think, well, God, how am I going to do this thing? And God had told me right before I heard that, that. Another men's meeting. And just keep it up until you have the men coming in and listening and understanding. And as you're faithful, God said he's going to be with you in the meetings. It's your faithful to hold them. And he'll be there and he, he will do what needs to be done. Donna, my daughter, I say unto you this night, Catherine, God said you're a good Daughter, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. I am calling you forth into the deepness. You feel it, but you don't understand. Daughter, there are great things that I'm calling you forth into. And I want to plant your feet, not on one, but several different paths. You're going to be like one that floats here and there. And you're going to be doing multiple things for my kingdom. You are not limited, daughter. I am opening. I'm hearing the gate wide for you to move. You have an audience that is prepared to hear what I am saying to them. 
I just need you to do it. I just need for you to speak what thus saith the Lord. Many around you at this moment are broken and, uh, and unsure of who I am. And daughter, I'm going to use you mightily to minister and to live out my word before them. You will live in such a way where they will have no question that I am real. Just your life is going to convict them to live holy. So daughter, be encouraged. Be of good cheer. There's a newness that I have set before you. Tiana, my love, this is your father. Get ready. Get ready to enter into a world of peace and joy. Daughter, I want you to go forth in this peace and joy and I want you to release it upon my children. In the few short days ahead, as you return back to school, you will understand why. So daughter, let me fill you with this peace and this joy. Many are wounded by the things of this world and they hide it well. But daughter, I'm going to open your eyes even deeper into the spirit. And you're going to be able to pull up those things that they feel they can hide from man. And daughter, you're going to share the gospel. And you're going to have so much love and joy for my people. And they will hear my voice through your words. So daughter, get ready, get ready. Much work is awaiting you. This is for Naomi. Daughter, I see you in the midnights. I see your heart. I hear your voice. I have not forgotten about you. The enemy is fighting you in many ways. And daughter, I know the battles. I want you to lift your eyes to the heavens and I want you to completely trust me in all things. You are not alone, even though times appear or feel 
like you are. You're not alone. Daughter, I am going to surround you with people who love you. You won't have to feel rejected. I want you to know that I am moving heaven and earth to push you forth. I'm calling you still. I'm calling you still. Your works are not completed, daughter. There's so much more. Be encouraged. Your father is on the scene. Daughter, I'm raising you up for such a time as this. I'm calling you to be an evangelist. I'm calling you to teach and preach my word. You may not understand this right now, but there are greater works that I'm calling you forth to do. Daughter, think this not a strange thing. You've come into the kingdom right on time. I want you to minister to your people group. I want you to minister to the youth. Daughter, there are many things that I have to set straight in your life before this can take place. But look forward to greater things. I have a plan and a purpose for your life. And you can trust me. You can hold on to my word. I want you to get into my word and I want you to start studying the word for yourself. I want you to be a strong tower. You already have boldness, daughter but I want you to be able to use my word against the enemy to set yourself free and then set others free. You will see much freedom as you sit before me and read the gospel. My spirit will teach you of the deeper things and you will be amazed of what my word will show you and you will learn the strategies of the enemy. And you will come to understand who you are in me. So daughter, I have it all mapped out. Keep going. Keep walking forth. Allow for me to transition your life into my perfect will. Father, we truly do thank you for what you've done here tonight. And Father God, I for one am so glad that you tell us exactly where we're at so that we don't get totally lost. I thank you for your honesty with us, Father. I thank you for the, your deep love for your children, that you always tell us the truth. We can never say you didn't warn us. 
I plead the blood of Jesus over everything you spoke tonight. The prophetic words that you spoke to your people. I listen, Father God. Such great instructions. Let them understand the fullness of what you called them into tonight. And I wrap all this in a blanket of blood. The enemy won't be able to steal any seed tonight. And those that are online, Father God, listening, whatever you did to them, Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over them also. Father God, you planted a seed tonight. Now, let someone come along and water it. Let it grow. And those that are online, Father God, who know you to your fullest, bring them deeper into your heart. Bring them into a deeper walk with you like you say we have to go, Father. Wake them up in the middle of the night. And Father, we just thank you for your love and your compassion and your grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We still have some people online that we're going to minister to, so when you leave, make sure you get your tapes. When you leave, leave quietly. This is for Nancy Connell. Still ringing. What's the volume all the way on the ends? On the master? Is it on the line? It's on zero. I'll turn this down just a little bit more. <clears throat> this is for Nancy Connell. Daughter, I've been holding your hand and walking you through a process of restoration, a process of growth, a process of bringing you deeper into my spirit realm. I am not stopping this process. I'm going to continue. There are many things that are going on around about you that you've been holding up before me. And I'm going to speak to you privately in your prayer closet about those things. I want you to know that every one of your footsteps is or ordered and ordained by me. You know that I have called you forth to be an entrepreneur. You know that I've called you forth to have multiple businesses. Do not be discouraged with what's going on in your businesses right now. Keep your eyes fixed and focused upon me. Daughter, there's things that I'm going to start showing you about your family that you need to intercede for. And as you intercede for those things, I will be able to change and rearrange and cause my true plan and true purpose to be established for you. There is an ugliness that has been surrounding your home. And daughter, I want you to know that I'm cleaning that ugliness up and I'm going to give you a brand new home. And everyone will be pleased with the works that I do. So do not be discouraged any longer with yourself. Know that this is a part of the plan that I'm working out for your good. I want you to enjoy the things that I give you, the giftings, the talents, the skills. I gave them to you for a reason, to be used for my kingdom. And little one, as you do these things, truth will be your friend. Truth will be your guide. Truth will keep you on the path to everlasting joy. This is for Ruthie. Daughter, I still want you to be still. I have not changed my mind about this. And I want you to shun all of the voices that are speaking into your ear at this given moment. This thing that I'm doing between you and I is personal. And little one, as you go forth into the darkness, I will place my light inside of you and you will be a beacon to all those that you come in contact with. I have solidified your footsteps 
and I will continue to do this. I am cementing you into me. And little one, as the storms come and the storms go, you will see that nothing will blow you off course anymore. I want you to see, little one, that I've placed a deeper level of maturity inside of you. And you are walking out the path and the plan that I have established for your life. You are growing. You don't feel any momentum. You don't feel any growth, but you are growing in me. I want you to hold your head up high and walk tall in this season of your life, knowing that I am working things out behind the scenes on your behalf and for your good. There is a day coming, little one, where those desires and those plans that you have made will come to pass. I am going to place you in a stable home and I'm going to place you with a stable place of employment where you will not ever have to fear the ups and the downs of spirits of infirmity or spirits attacking your finances. This is all going to level itself out and you will see this devil no more. Rejoice, little one. Praise me from the core part of your being right now. And as you do this, I will send out the angels who will destroy every one of the ambushes that have been set against you and your household. And you shall truly rejoice in complete freedom in me. This is for Annie Irvine. Daughter, I have called you up higher and you have to come to that place. I am leading you into a new level of consecration before me. With this consecration comes a deeper understanding of who I am and what it is that I'm doing for you. Daughter, you must see that the enemy has been on an all out attack to destroy you and to take you out of my will. He almost succeeded, but little one, I stepped in and I stopped his plan. You must see that I am on your side. You must see that I am for you and not against you. And even though the darkness rages, I am greater than that darkness. I want you to see and to understand that I have placed my word down on the inside of your bosom. And daughter, as the things get into the heavy fight mode and battlefield mode, that word will come out and it will destroy the works of the enemy. You have nothing to be ashamed of anymore. Daughter, hold your head up high. Your past is the past. I have forgiven you. I have thrown it into the sea of forgetfulness and you need to forgive yourself. And daughter, as you forgive yourself, you will enter into that new level of freedom that I have set aside for you. I don't want you to walk around shame-faced anymore. It's done. It's over with. Move on. Come into the fullness of who I am. And trust me, I am going to use you, despite what the religious people around about you say. I am going to take you into the higher plains in my kingdom where you will preach and prophesy my word to my people so just keep going don't quit in this season and watch what I do with your life this is for Brit Pender You must come to a deeper place in my kingdom. You must seek me with all of your heart, little one. This is the day and the hour where I'm causing my children to go to the higher heights in my kingdom. There is a burden that you're carrying that I want you to release to me. You cannot get vengeance. You must leave that to me. I need you to forgive in this season of your life. I need you to forgive all who have hurt you, 
who have put you down, who have stepped on you and spit upon you. And little one, as you do this, you will feel the chains and the shackles of hate being removed from you. You have to understand that this hate that has been pointed at you has become a snare to you because of you not being able to forgive. Break the snare by forgiving and see that I will lift you up. I am going to reestablish these relationships that have been broken and destroyed and you all will become good friends. The truth will come out and the hurt and the pain will be healed. And then you all will go forth in a ministry together, preaching and teaching my word. This is a time where I am mending relationships. And you will see that I am doing this for you and on your behalf. This concludes the online prophetic for tonight. We thank you for joining us. And we will be back on Sunday for more of the Holy Spirit. Have a wonderful Independence Day with your family. Be blessed.